thank you, Helen, for that very kind introduction. Can I also acknowledge the traditional owners of the land, uh, past and present? Can I acknowledge my parliamentary colleagues, past and present? <laughs> can, I, can I also acknowledge uh, both uh, Gassan and Randa? You are both very, very hard acts to follow in any speech. Um, Randa is a person who, if you know her well, is somebody that uh, if she is passionate about anything, she lets you know very quickly. And if you don't agree with her, she lets you know even quicker. And she will not leave until you see the light of day. And I've always appreciated that. As for Gassan, I met Gassan basically in my first week of being elected in Parliament. And uh, after meeting him and discussing a number of issues, I was absolutely convinced that he was one of the most impressive, intelligent young men that I had met in a very long time. Five years later, you're not so young, Gassan, but uh, <laughs> surprise, surprise, neither am I. But you still are an incredibly impressive, intelligent man. It is my honour to be speaking in support of ACON Where Family 2 report and to have the honour of launching it today. ACON is Australia's largest community-based organisation dedicated to improving the health and well-being of the gay, lesbian, bisexual and transgender community. Today, their focus is on the Arabic-speaking community of New South Wales and the need to address underlying trends of homophobia surrounding homosexual members. Homophobia must be stopped. It must be removed. It should not exist in our community. Whilst homophobia exists in all communities, its existence in the Arab community contradicts the compassionate, hospitable emphasis of the Arab culture. In 2007, as I indicated in my inaugural speech, I entered Parliament for a number of reasons. The first was to fight prejudice. This was driven by my desire to promote Australia's great society, progression and ability to embrace difference, to accept and include and embrace. The second reason was to fight injustice. As Martin Luther King said, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Today, these endeavours remain a high priori priority in my work. It was very interesting this morning, I received a phone call from a very dear friend who had heard the SBS interview this morning. And his words to me were, geez, I understand you're launching this report. And I said, yes, I am. He goes, must take a lot of courage for you to do that. And I thought, how sad. How sad that somebody would think that it would take courage to stand here and launch what should be so natural, so accepting and so embracing. And I made that clear to him. I indicated to him that the reason I want to do this was that his question to me was a homophobic attitude question. It doesn't take courage. This is all about being one, all about being, as Gassan says, one family. This is what it's all about. So that's why I'm proud to be part of ACON's We're Family 2 launch. I'm the father of six daughters, constantly working to protect them from the feelings of animosity and prejudice of any form whatsoever. I understand that any parent would feel the same. So why should prejudice based on sexuality be ignored? According to ACON's research, indicated in Chapter 3 of the report, 88% of participants experience a reigning sense of hostility from members of the Arab community. This is far too high and stems from issues such as a lack of understanding. Misconceptions include the belief that homosexuality is a choice, unnatural and a Western notion. As a result, some community members have experienced homophobic acts such as helpful rumours, verbal abuse, pressure to act straight, threats of violence, intimidation, and worst of all, acts of physical violence. These mistaken community attitudes are unjustly harming the homosexual members of the community, as well as members of their families. However, it, should be, it would be erroneous to attribute homophobia to the entire Arabic-speaking community. I credit those who support and accept same-sex lifestyles and initiatives. For instance, one girl spoke highly of her gay brother, and I quote, I developed a really strong pursuit to giving it a voice after my brother came out, to generate some kind of honouring for him and how beautiful he is." Close quotes. These attitudes should be adapted. Families should be respected, accepted and celebrated. If more members of the community implemented this attitude, 
the large proportion of individuals who fear disclosure of their sexuality would be diminished and the community's bond strengthened. Coming out should be a time of liberation and self-affirmation for the individual, not a time of fear and rejection. But in order to protect family honour and reputation within one's community, many have felt feeling silenced and trapped. The report reveals some families develop a greater level of homophobia, burning the individual with issues of self-acceptance. The research attributes this to cultural silence as individuals and their families feel a need to remain secretive of sexuality for protection. I quote from one of the participants, I don't feel I could ever be out in the Arabic community without bringing my family to shame. It does make you feel somewhat trapped. The report shows that as a result, a greater proportion of Arabic speaking homosexuals have chosen to disclose their sexuality to non-Arab friends as opposed to Arab friends. Many are also turning to gay and lesbian organisations and services like ACON as support networks and a form of acceptance. Some participants specified that the organisations and services available to homosexuals of the Arabic speaking community <coughs> were culturally inappropriate. One of you said that these services, and I quote, don't get the complexity of living as an Arab in the current climate. There is no one from the community represented in these organisations especially Muslim people, to help with the delivery of services. Close. Hence, many members of the Arab community are seeking services that focus on educating their community, supporting their families, and dispelling some of the myths about being gay that exist in the Arab community. ACON's Where Family Too will see the development of initiatives dedicated to the support and understanding of homosexuality in the Arab community. There is a strong division in the community between those who see homophobia as the problem and those who see homosexuality as the problem. It is vital that these sides are unified through an informed understanding, further strengthening the Arabic speaking community. There is no excuse for homophobia or any need. Those isolated by homophobia are being deprived of their right to embrace their culture and in turn be embraced by their community. I quote from one of the participants. That's the best thing about our community, that close-knit aspect. When that close-knit aspect can be used in a positive way, it's actually really beautiful. The values of compassion and intimacy that characterise the Arab culture should not be lost to ignorance. Individuals of different sexual orientations should be of no exception. They are family too. In the 1980s, Akon led one of the world's most successful campaigns in response to HIV, AIDS and the myths regarding homosexuality. Today, we see Akon working in our community to address misconceptions surrounding homosexuality and dispel homophobia. I am truly proud to be part of Akon's launch of We're Family Too initiative and trust that our community's ideals of love, understanding and compassion will prevail. Thank you very much and welcome.